Hi everybody. I am Dr. Pavitra and this has been a long break, I know, and I hope to continue making videos more consistently from now on. So let's hope for the best. Today we'll be discussing uh, on tuberculoma versus neurocysticercosis, which is a um, very common viva question, uh, even short question. So we'll be having a delightful one slide education on the same. So clinical and neuroimaging. Clinically, what your neurocysticercosis will present as um, focal convulsion usually uh, with features of raised ACP. Whereas a tuberculoma, there can be a previous history of fever, some weight loss. So those constitutional symptoms can be there in tuberculoma. Meningitis features can be there in uh, um, tuberculoma the, because tuberculosis generally you have associated basal meningitis. Neuroimaging, CT, MRI, both can be done. CT is good as a uh, initial screening, whereas MRI will give you uh, better imaging features. CT in non-contrast, what do you expect to see in a neurocysticercosis? You basically want to know whether it is live or a calcified NCC. Why do you want to know that? You want to know that because if it's going to be a non-viable um, uh, neurocysticercosis you basically don't have to treat with anti-helminthic medications you don't have to give the albendazole part right but if it is going to be a uh, active or live um, ring en ring enhancing lesion or your uh, space occupying lesion whichever way you want to look at it so if it is going to be a active lesion then you will see a hypodense lesion if it is going to be a non-viable then you don't have to treat it so that you'll be able to make out in non-contrast versus contrast imaging. Um, CT is good as an initial screen because you want to know whether one yes we saw whether it is viable non-viable two you want to know about size of the ventricles and whether currently there are features of raised ICP which you will have to control by your neuroprotective measures. MRI what do you want to see this table is very very important okay consistently asked. So your size in a tuberculoma, you generally expect to see a larger size, more than 2 centimeters, whereas in neurocysticercosis, it's generally small. Tuberculoma has a thick, irregular wall, and surrounding edema is going to be huge. There's going to be a marked perilational edema, which, which can be big enough to cause a midline shift or a mass effect. Whereas in a neurocysticercosis, size is small, edema is small, the wall is small, everything is small. Okay, so remember it like that. Tuberculoma will have a basal meningitis features, whereas neurocysticercosis it is absent. In um, neurocysticercosis, you can expect to see a scolex, which is better seen via your MRI. Okay, so what you expect to see is a hyperdense dot within a cystic lesion. Tuberculoma obviously that scolex is going to be absent. Another important feature in a neurocysticercosis, this is very very important, is you you can see multiple lesions in both ma. You should remember that tuberculoma as well as neurocysticercosis there can be multiple lesions, but in neurocysticercosis you will be able to see the different stages. Okay, I'll be discussing the uh, AOC and update on neurocysticercosis management in the subsequent class. So there are different stages: colloidal, your um, calcified. Uh, different different stages are there so multiple lesions can have different stages in neurocysticercosis whereas tuberculoma that different staging will be absent the location of neurocysticercosis is usually in the gray matter white matter junction or in basal ganglia whereas tuberculoma it is posterior fossa or base so the initial features one part you should remember Scolex present is going to be definitely neurocysticercosis. You cannot think of anything else. Multiple lesions with different stages goes more in favor of neurocysticercosis. And your uh, gray matter, white matter junction goes in favor of neurocysticercosis. A big lesion, irregular wall, marked edema with basal meningitis and in the posterior fossa or base that goes more in favor of a tuberculoma. Another important point is in MRI, when you do uh, your uh, T1, T2 imaging, if they want you to tell one important finding in MRI, apart from your uh, scolex, apart from what we discussed earlier, 
so tell that in a neurocystic sarcosis it's going to be a hyper intense cyst with a thin walled uh, scolex whereas in tuberculoma the core is going to be hypo intense core okay with a hyper intense rim this feature is very very important so tuberculoma has in t2 weighted imaging hypo intense core with hyper intense rim it n- almost never happens in neurocystic sarcosis unless it's going to be significantly calcified okay so this is a very important feature in tuberculoma mr spectroscopy findings tuberculoma has more lipid content so anything with cholesterol in the numerator is going to be elevated cholesterol creatinine ratio is going to be elevated your uh, cholesterol uh, na ratio is going to be elevated whereas in neurocystic sarcosis amino acid content is going to be more so acetate succinate ratio is going to be high so amino acid peak in neurocystic sarcosis amino ncc n and n you remember okay tuberculoma lipid so l and l you can remember flare imaging la there will be complete suppression fluid attenuated um, sequencing la there will be complete suppression in a neurocystic sarcosis whereas there will not be any suppression or incomplete suppression in case of a tuberculoma this magnetization transfer imaging i tried to understand the concept but it was very difficult to understand but what i was able to make out is because of a high lipid content this mt ratio is going to be lower in case of your uh, tuberculoma and it is going to be higher in case of your neurocystic sarcosis so between mri and ct if somebody is going to ask you which is better mri is always better because one it can detect atypical locations especially your intraventricular subarachnoid spinal remember if you find these locations this goes more in favor of your ncc okay tuberculomas will not be found there commonly ncc will be found in intraventricular location subarachnoid location and spinal location mri will be able to better delineate uh, delineate lesions in posterior fossa and those that are close to skull and anyway scolex and internal characteristics are better seen via mri so ct is good as a initial screening but if you want to know more in detail then mri is going to be a better choice so that is about your tuberculoma and ncc i think with this you will be able to um, answer viva questions as well as answer any short questions if it should arise so thank you guys all the best study well